wake up without sleep. Welcome to Rational Alchemy. Welcome to the table. Except today we're doing rational music, and I'm joined at the table by Roger Donardi. Roger, welcome to the table. Thanks for having me on. We're going to talk about Roger's music today, and we're going to talk about 12 notes for seven stories. Roger, give us a little bit behind the LP that you, you are creating. Well, it's a seven track, or it's a concept album based on the idea that there's only seven stories that have ever been written, and there's only 12 notes in music. And uh, I wrote it at a time when I was really, really in a tough spot, and I decided to make an album that tried to speak to everyone. So the idea that there was only 12 or only seven stories for uh, people to ever live through, mm -hmm. really, I thought would be something to, a good place to start. Where did the idea of the concept come from? What, what sort of triggered it? So I had always been a musician in the part time and I had always wanted to make an album, but it was just like everyone else. You put it off and you put it off and it's second best. And, and then uh, after COVID, I, I lost a good chunk of hearing and I developed terrible tinnitus and I, uh, I no longer had, I could no longer listen to, to music and for oh. me, yeah, for me, that was uh, that was the end of the world. I, I had always said I would I'd rather be blind than deaf, and, and uh, it even took I, I couldn't even speak to people. I couldn't comprehend what they were saying. Um, so uh, things were pretty bad. Uh, music had gotten me through some really hard times in my previous you know part of life, and to lose that was I might as well be done. And uh, I decided if I was done, like how I would feel like a failure. And I decided it was that if I had never made an album. And it was a tough time for everyone. You know, we all remember 2020 and 2021. And it's like, you know, no matter, no matter what's happening, no matter what, what you're going through, according to this, there's only seven stories ever written. So it's going to be one of these. And I decided that the most important thing now was to make an album. And that was no distractions, no nothing, because it was, had become that or nothing. So I uh, slowly listened to music and it just increased it by just a decibel a day. And it was, it was almost like a stroke victim relearning, oh, learning okay. how to hear. Yes. I just decided I would relearn how to hear music, no matter how painful it was, no matter what it was. And I, that, was, that was what it, I was going to do. It is so hard for me to understand the concept because I've never had that sort of issue with my hearing. Oh yeah, and it, and it's and I you know I I, I really stand back and, and appreciate what you were able to do. It, it must have been hard. Yeah, and so hidden. So yes. like, you know, and other people don't always know what's going on. You're just kind of an idiot who can't understand the basic directions of down the hall and to the That's left. Right. So like there was also like, yeah. And to, to, to have lost the idea of mixing and, and mixing and doing my own album with, with the ringing, because I, I would never know if it was there. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Now, through the opening titles of the show, we were listening to Voyage and Return. Yes. So tell us a little bit about that particular song. So during this time, as I was doing the recovery, uh, I actually discovered Alan Watts, and uh, a lot of his, his uh, recordings spoke to me. And one thing he says is, uh, we like to say, you know, like life is a journey, not a destination, but, but even that's not right. That's the idea that you're going to move toward this and towards that, and then you'll achieve this, and then I'll be happy, and whatever, whatever, and mm -hmm. no. No, actually, it's dancing. You know, in dancing, you're not trying to get to a certain spot on the floor. You're not trying to, to, to like, right. you know, you're just going in a great big circle. You're, you're going to be born. You're going to die. You were dirt. You're going to be dirt again. Like, you're going to be paying taxes. <laughs> <laughs> this whole thing is a voyage. And, and uh, you know, we, uh, we are what our genetics and all that make us and our previous experiences and how we see the world. So... You know, there's a line in there to journey wide, eyes wide open. You can see things the way you see things. And, and, and if you think of us all as just the universe's like, nerves or, or sensors or, or taste buds, mm -hmm. maybe this time you're just 
a bud that tastes things sour. And you'd be like, how come I'm the only one that tastes things so sour or so sweet or whatever, you know? You, you, you see how you see. And um, so be here. You were, you were, you were, you're alive, so you're valid. And observe the world the way you observe it, and right. you're going back. Well, that's the thing. Pe people will look at art, for instance, whether it be music or whether it be fine art or whatever kind of art it is. Someone will love something, someone will hate exactly right. Right. the same thing. Exactly. And then you've got people in the middle, and yeah. you know, it, it, it all depends on how you're wired. Yeah, it's, that's what makes it so great. That's what makes it so great, yeah. yes. It's no difference with food or, or, any, or any other art or painting. It's like, that's awful. It's like, really? I, it inspires me to... Yeah, to me, it would look... Yeah. yeah, that's the whole purpose, you know? Like, yeah, it's, you know, I like hearing people's feedback, but I actually a lot of times enjoy... Like when people didn't like it, because it's like, oh, that means I did a really good job of that style that you've decided you haven't liked. So many people are like, I'm this genre or that genre right. or this genre, and it's, right. it's, it's, it's fine. I, See, I enjoy that. The thing I liked about Voyage and Return was the way that you kept building. Right. It, it, it was very cleverly done because you kept building and building and building, and then you'd add little things in the background. Yes. Yeah, that's... I'm, I'm dying to hear this at home with my headphones on, yes. to be honest with you. Yes, yes, exactly. There's, uh, most of the songs have some what they like to call ear candy. Yes. But um, early, when I first discovered music, uh, those, those older recordings, the 70s and, and, and some of the 80s, those 70s recordings with the, and the, with the sonic landscapes that, yes. would be, that would be placed, it's... You're absorbed into it, a whole other world, and, you know, and that that had to be in there. That is true. And what was so fascinating about the music of the '70s was how they put it together in the studios because they had such archaic equipment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not like today where you can literally do everything on your computer if you wish. Yeah, yeah. Until you want to do that one thing that they did, because that's like, right. <laughs> you'll be like, "How did they get that sound? How did they do it? How did they do it?" You'll read articles. You know, I obsess about it. I actually research like the old electronics to rebuild some of their their like pedals. And anyway, you get into it, and finally, it's like. like like recently I found out about the Abbey Road like double tape and it's like oh actually there was like five technicians varying the voltage straight from the wall that's it while one's looping and another's looping and it's like well how am I going to do that you know but then you know you try to do your best and that, that's like but it's no different than choosing a color you know like right. people like sometimes will criticize that and then uh, I, I, I don't I uh it's like, how did Leonardo get Da Vinci get that blue? You know, how yes. did he mix that? You know, and like, what, how do you get that shade? And so, like, when you think of music, you know, sounds as colors and textures, then it's, uh, it becomes such a fun path to yes. how, what is that sound making that, that beautiful sound? That's correct. Yeah, and you get to get absorbed into to another realm where yeah. only the beat matters. I'll never forget watching the documentary about Pink Floyd putting together Dark Side of the Moon. Mm. At the end of them, it was all five of them, the engineer and the four Pink Floyd members, all mixing simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was the only way they could right, do right, it. Right, right, right. There's no volume automation. There, there was no, uh -huh. no, nothing like that uh -huh. at all. Uh -huh. They had to do the whole thing manually. Yeah. And that's what made the whole thing such a masterpiece, of course. I watched Neil Young, uh, not to get too off into music tech and everything, but I watched the Neil Young uh, interview and he said, oh, the, uh, the first rough mix was always the best because the tape the particles would actually start like fizzing down and oh, calming right, right, down right. after, after right, right after. So, so like the next day, it was never actually the same. And so like the rough mix on the day of the cut, on the night of the cut was to him always, always his favorite. Always the best, the best to one. To him, it was the one that always captured it. And that makes a lot of sense. Now, the second thing that we're going to listen to is, is Rags to Riches. Yeah. Before we listen to it, why don't you give us a little bit of the history of Rags to Riches? So Rags to Riches, for me, um, it's a, uh, we'd like to think of it as money, but there's so many more things than riches. Um, and so I wrote this song, it's uh, just dedicated to the people in my life who, even though there's, there's been many, there's been many bads, there's been many goods. And I've always prided myself on being able to tell and really know who to, who's, who to keep close. Mm -hmm. And like, and you know, sometimes it seems like you're only surrounded by, by people who might not be the best, but if, if you really look, uh, you'll you'll know a diamond. You can find one in in, in this in in this concept album. 
Well, we had, we had, we'll have, yeah, we'll be coming out of a quest and they discovered their treasure at the end by doing their voyage. I'm intrigued because I, I loved, as soon as I heard the opening, the opening of Voyage and Return, I was in love with the song already. So Thank I'm you. dying now to hear Rags to Riches. So let's, let's, listen to, let's listen to the song. Thank you. Don't know much about the nation or the world today. Don't know much about inflation or the CIA. Don't know much about the Dalai Lama, religion or God. Don't know much about quantum physics, but that's probably not odd. But I know a diamond when I find it, even when it's not shining so bright. I know a diamond when I find one, you can tell when you hold it tight. We'll make life a song. Like a dream If others don't see it shines Just fine with me Don't know much about politics Medicine or kung fu Don't know why Leave behind all my Follow through Don't know much about crypto Or foreign diplomats don't know much about Wall Street lobbyists or bureaucrats. For some very strange reason, the way the song opened very much reminded me a little bit there of a couple of John Lennon songs. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He was, yeah, that was definitely. I, I hope I'm not insulting you. Or no, anything, no, that's a huge compliment. Like I love, I love getting comparisons. It's terrific. Because yeah. be, it was just, it was so clever the way that you you made that first transition. Yeah, and his his post his post Beatles was so so raw, and like, yes. that's what I really wanted it to be. I wanted, it, I didn't want it to sound real, real processed and, and, and done. It's supposed to be real heartfelt, um, and that's just, that's just kind of how the chords sounded best. Um, it actually has been through a few uh, alterations, but um, I worked in my, uh, my uncle's ukulele. Mm -hmm. um, he, he's, he's gotten an early COVID also. Um, but I, uh, he's uh, someone that changed my life. So I, I really, really wanted to include that. And it just really lent itself to that rhythm and that backbeat. It that just Lennon worked, did. didn't it? Yeah, that backbeat, like, yeah, uh, that Lennon, however you want to put it into words. And, and the other thing I picked up fairly quickly was you got a little bit of humour in there as well, don't you? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, I, I could hear you sort of slipping, st oh, slipping yeah. a few things yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a gong on the word kung fu. <laughs> and like, yeah, yeah, no, it was supposed to be uh, you know, a, a big, wet, sloppy kiss of a song is how I described it to my engineer. No, oh, I yeah. like that. Yeah, and the, the oohs and ahs, actually, I can't say enough. I've been working with Cinder Sound. Uh, they're a local studio here. They're oh, Okay. Amazing, and uh, Kyle, he, he's he's my engineer, and he, he helped me out with that, and uh, I can't say enough. With I don't go that high, <laughs> but you know, he's amazing. Um, so we did that, and I really wanted to work in my uncle's ukulele. We uh, we weren't allowed to listen to rock music growing up, and uh, but oh, we why were. Not? We were uh, extremely, extremely religious. Oh dear. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> yes, yes. Um, we weren't allowed to have dice in the house because someone could see you might be gambling. So like, yeah, it was pretty rough. And uh, you know, I won't, we, won't, we won't do the sob story too long, <laughs> but uh, I had had zero exposure to secular music at all. Like once I heard, heard it through the grapevine in Burger King and I, I lost my mind. I was dancing around. Um, yeah, the rock and roll was bad. Yeah, it was the demon is in you. All, all that hellfire brimstone. Anyway, was it really heard it through? The, I heard it through the grapevine. One, one, yeah. Was that really the song? That was just one of my earliest memories of hearing rock and going crazy. I'll tell you a story about that. My ukulele was important though because he would show up for Christmas. We'd see him every few years, and all of a sudden he would play some of these pop tunes again, Beatles, sixties, seventies, yes. whatever, and. I had never heard anything like that. As far as I knew, he had wrote them. So uh, that, always, that was where I got that first little planted seed of like, there's a, there's a different life out there. Um, to answer your earlier question, the song that changed my life. One day I'm digging through my, uh, 
the ch my, my parents like you know foot chest at the foot of the bed and deep in the bottom is the tape and it says the best of the guess who <laughs> and so I put some headphones on and I got my secret tape player and I put it on and it's the original version with the, the little blues you know yep. American woman gonna mess your mind American woman and then it breaks into that the, da, 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 da. oh my god I uh yeah, I can still do it. Every time I talk about it, I actually still. Yeah, you look at look at they are literally. <laughs> yup. Yeah, and so like, and that guitar, that guitar riff, like, oh my goodness, and it, my mind exploded. Like I was alone in my room, and I'm just like jumping around with a tennis. See, look at this. <laughs> I'm jumping around. <laughs> I'm jumping around with a tennis racket, and I'm just like. Whoa! And I listened to that whole, um, you know, best of, which yeah. I'm actually not a fan of compilations. I like concept albums, but man, that was an awesome one. And you know, you go into Bus Rider and whatever, and it's like, what are these people even talking about? And like these these concepts and and, and just the raw feel. And so that song was where this is this is truth. Like there is like that guitar solo at the beginning, which I hear he actually destroyed an amp every time they took a take because he's actually plugging the output of one into another oh, and then that no. into another. And so like to do those recordings he actually had to destroy an amp each time. Good <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Because that's another one. How do you get that sound? It's like, well, you buy two whatever amps and blow one up. <laughs> so like, okay, you know, there's just that that truth, and like, there's there's no lying here. You know, like, there's you can hear that this is what these people are feeling. This is what it is, and you know, wow. And that was there was no looking back. How do you how do you look back after that? Absolutely. Like, everything In else. In fact, is you've boring. only ever looked forward. I yeah, I've tried. I that's that's the goal because. Uh, you know, it's uh, your potential doesn't matter much. Right. It's uh, we don't we don't measure weightlifters by measuring their biceps and like whatever and say, okay, you're this age and blah blah blah. And say, so, uh, you've got the most potential to 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 lift, so you win. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. No, you got to right. go over there and you got to lift it. So it's what it takes to stop you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yeah, there's been times I've been pretty slowed down and got distracted, but every time it's like, is this what's going to stop me? Right. And so, yeah. When you're actually writing the song, have you thought of the whole song all the way through, or or, oh, no. or, or do you just sort of build upon it and build upon it and then go, how the heck am I going to end it? Um, oh yeah, yes and no. It's uh, similar, but it's it's more simultaneous and, and nebulous than that. Really, okay. I. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I come up with a song about every day to every other day. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds ridiculous, but a little bird flies over and drops them into my head. Uh, half the time, I don't even like them. <laughs> like, oh man, this is annoying. But um, everything like, I see and hear rhythm and melodies in just about everything I do, and um, even just throughout the day in this, or a little phrase will just pop into your head and it won't oh, get out. Okay. And it kind of sings itself yep. with a little melody you'll see that day. And then while that's happening, you a lot of times it'll be a piano or a, or a guitar that's kind of in your mind. And you can start like really processing it. And I, I tend to write in the middle and then out or a key oh, line okay. and backwards. Mm -hmm. um, because, I, yeah, I, I, it becomes more lifelike and... You can do that, and then you run into your own, you know, limits. Like, yes. you know, um, you know, I uh, I don't consider myself a virtuoso at anything. I I tongue in cheek joke, actually not even tongue in cheek. I try to be the best mediocre musician I can be. <laughs> <laughs> so like, you know, there's nothing hold, I do. Hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Having heard your music, I don't think you can actually use the word mediocre. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I challenge you there is not a part in there that no person could not play with six months of practice. Doesn't matter. Exactly. It doesn't matter because exactly. you came up with it. Exactly. Because, well, and anything worth doing is worth doing poorly. <laughs> like, I've never heard that. Yeah. In music world and in art, I mean, it doesn't apply. To, you always do your best. Yes. But you can get into the sickness of like, <laughs> I don't have the perfect whatever, or I don't have a good enough guitar, or I don't have a good enough amplifier, or I don't have the, right. I don't, and you know what? Now it's time to say that phrase. Like if you have the level of passion where every detail is gonna bother you and it is gonna be the best, yep. 
then you know what? Sometimes if it's worth doing, it's worth doing poorly. So like it became making this album is what's going to do it. And if this is how good I can play, right. then this is what's on there. Because otherwise, am I going to let that, am I going to practice for a year and then do it? And that's how that's we right. had in that trap before. Agreed. The next song we're going to listen to is Tragedy. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about Tragedy and then we'll listen to the song. This was one of the hardest songs I wrote on the album. This is really the heart of, of my message and, and what caused a lot of this. Um, again, for me, losing my hearing was my absolute nightmare. I, I literally just was a puddle in a corner, just, just crying. I, I can like, imagine. Yeah, it was, yeah. I woke up, I went to sleep. I woke up every day, like, so sad that I woke up. I was really ready to be done. Um, and uh, I had to write, and, and I had the realization that, hey, this is, this is one of the seven stories. Like, this, this deserves, and I, it was tempting to make a pop song of, like, tragedy and overcoming and blah, 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 but, like, no, like, sadness, Sadness is real. Like, that's a real story. Some people have very sad lives. And to, like, skip that wouldn't have been very honest. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so um, I, I wrote this, and it's actually about my hearing loss. But again, I tried to take what made it about me and tried to take that out at the end. So when you ask how I write, a lot of times I'll use personal experiences and then you yank every I, me, everything that says like what day it was or, you know, take it all out and then and leave it, leave it for everyone. Because now it's everyone's story again. Just, right. It's the filter version of your experience. So I had to write also, you know, it's not just about whining and wallowing in your, in your illness or your, or your uh, diagnosis. Uh, you know, and I've gone through a lot of mental health issues and it, you know, it's so easy to fall into, I'm a blah, 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 or I'm a this or that and, mm -hmm. and whatever. And well, now I'm deaf and I can't do it. And again, is this what's going to stop me? So I didn't want it to be whining. So I tried to write a fun to listen to song about wishing the world was over. <laughs> <laughs> now, there, there is an oxymoron if ever I heard one. Well, because, yeah, it's real. It's but real. It's also temporary, yes. possibly. Yes. But like... You know, yep. you gotta, you gotta do it. So let's listen to tragedy. Are 
you have got some very interesting transitions there. Thank you. That, that was clever, because it started off in the first couple of bars, I thought, oh, here we go, deep yeah. and dark and depressing. Exactly. And all of a sudden, you slammed the door in my face, thank you very much, <laughs> and, and took it up a notch. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, yeah, it was, that was the point. Like, th this feeling is here and intended for the song, but also, let's not just sit and cry. Right. You know, like, you know, yeah, yeah. Again, a fun to listen to song about wishing things uh, were about, over. About tragedy. <laughs> yeah, 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 like we all feel this way. Like this happens to everyone. And, uh, you know, it, it's, that was, that was the core. And, and you know, I, <laughs> sorry, we got a little, I, even, I still get choked up about that one. Uh, I can hard. understand that because, I mean, that, that really is the one, pro that's probably the song that's closest to you. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, for sure. Yes. Yeah, that's the core of the album, you know, like, no, no matter what it is, like, and it's been, <clears throat> I've had friends who've, you know, ended their lives. Oh. And, and you, know, what do you, you know, we've all have. And, and we all would say the same thing. Hey, man, no matter what it was you needed, I would have given it to you or you know anything you could have just moved here anything I'd have driven across the world or across the yeah. country I'd have done anything like we all have, or many of us have felt that and when when I was at that point it was why am I not willing to do that for myself mm -hmm. and uh and and so like to anyone out there feeling that way um oh and, and doing this and, and, and writing this song and powering through it, uh, I got to, I'm starting to meet the most wonderful people and that I never would have met if I just right. had sat and cried about it. Like if we didn't kind of like, not so much joke about it, but like, yeah, yeah. stiff up her lip and, 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 and go for it. Yeah, yeah, say how you feel, but you yeah. know, don't, yeah. So, you know, anyone who's feeling that way, like, don't, don't do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, take that one drink that one dream that you have, make it the most important and just, and just see it. what happens before yeah. you like, do one more try, go down swinging, you know, like, yeah. don't give up. So yeah, it wasn't gonna be a, a cry fest the whole time. Now you may find this next statement from me a little strange, but I really mean it. It was a pleasure to listen to music where I could understand the damn lyrics without reading an LP cover. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, that is two things. One, the lyrics were really important to me. Uh, yes. Again, I don't consider myself a virtuoso singer, so I wanted to make, but I, that wasn't the point. I wanted to make a song in an album that almost anyone could sing along to. Right. You know, so like, again, we're leaning into that every person thing. And then also, um, I can't give... I've already given credit to Cinder Sound, but um, the help that I get from my engineer Kyle Donovan at Cinder Sound has like he's he's helped me with my his layered yeah because with yes. my hearing loss I actually can hear vocals very well here and coming from the age that I come from you know from everything from you know Kurt Cobain and whatever right. you go, mumble 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 I know but it's that was and that was okay that was you know put your own stuff on it but but. I feel like we're at the time now where it's starting, it's time to start saying something again. I and agree. not something like specific. Like, you know, I, other than I went to the store on Tuesday and I got blah, 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 and I drive a blankety blank. No, no, no. Like, actually, like, let's start having artistic statements again. And, and it, it, it takes a lot of bravery to it not does. just sing about, you know, drinking tonight. Now, Roger, before we close, I know you're halfway through producing the new song called Rebirth. Yes. And, and you wanted to put a few words out there about the song before we can even listen to it. Yeah, yeah. Which I think is terribly unfair of you. <laughs> well, you have to listen to the album when it's released. Um, oh, you don't think I won't be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Rebirth is coming after tragedy. You know, first you'll be reborn, yes. and then I'll even do, even do another teaser, then we overcome the monster. Uh, so, Rebirth is... Uh, it uh, starts out with some uh, social media noises, and I, I went through a real problem with social media. Uh, I had to, I actually disappeared for many, many years. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I struggle with that. It's really hard for me. Um, and, um, but I had a realization when I was trying to write Rebirth is, you know, who, who is being reborn right now, and, 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 and where is it happening? And I, I uh, forget what, 
influencer it was, but it didn't really matter. Um, there was this girl, actually it was a girl in the park, she was taking a pictures, and I noticed she was like putting things in, and she was younger, and, and she was like putting products in, she was taking them in the park, and I was trapped in a small little town, and, and if social media existed at the time, well, it's fun to demonize it, and it's easy, and it does have its problems. This is where you can just move to another town and suddenly be a different person. Mm -hmm. you know? for, for the family that I came out to, to even release my name, Roger Denardi, they, there will be a day where they'll find it, and they will not be happy. It will crush them, and I had to, I had to overcome that. And, and so... Well, it looks like they might just be taking selfies and doing stuff, and a lot of them are. There's actually people who are just trying to get out of some of the most awful situations you can possibly imagine. And so it can be used for good and evil, and it can be, uh, anything, and it can be a lot of things. But um, I really felt like, and I had to do it in a very like classic rock style, because I really like the idea of how... Some of our uh, people who grew up in listening to 70s music, you know, which was way was before my time, and grew up listening to, to music now, it's really fun to write a classic version on observance, mm -hmm. on a positive observance of a new thing that many aren't getting. And I really wanted to put a positive twist on how it's not that much different than that person we used to honor that was going around selling CDs out of their car or selling art and... and, and like there is an admiration to many people that are doing a lot of things, and uh, right. yeah, and, and and respect them, and, and they're they're probably more vulnerable than you might realize, and, and you know, so this is some people's way of escaping and being completely reborn, like your Marilyn Monroe's from the time who moved from a small town and blah blah blah, you know, right. or whoever whatever yep. star that you pick. That was one of the best songs ever written. Goodbye, Norma Jean. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Elton John. It's exactly. Just, that's a brilliant song. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. Like she, but look at the life she led because she decided yes. to be reborn through media. Well, yes. Sure, it's scary that it's a phone and it might be AI and blah blah blah. And, and and those are all very serious things that do need to be considered. But also, like, there is truth somewhere in there, and honor that. Yeah. When do you believe Twelve Notes for Seven Stories is going to be? Put to bed. We are moving very quickly on getting it done by the end of the year. That oh, is excellent. my goal. Uh, there's three songs left. Um, uh, there's a surprise. Might be a surprise ending. <laughs> uh, I'll leave that out. Uh, after this, we have uh, Overcoming the Monster, because mm -hmm. after you're reborn, I like you're going to run into probably the same old thing you ran into before. Because any of us that have tried to relocate and move yes. our lives, what do you know? You end up doing the same thing again. Yep. So next is Overcoming the Monster. And then we'll have some comedy, and then a maybe surprise ending. Excellent, excellent, Roger. Thank you so much for coming. Thank in you for and, having and, me. And this is so much fun. About this. Uh, I am so, so, so happily surprised at the quality, the clarity, the built-in humor, and your music skills are second to none. Thank I, you. I, I know you kept saying mediocre. <laughs> Let me say this. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There isn't a moment that I have Thank you so much for coming in. That absolute pleasure working with you and talking to you. And Thanks, I hope Nigel. when this is finished, let's come back in the studio. Yeah. Let's do part two. Oh, that would be great. Wouldn't that be great? That'd be terrific. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you once again for joining me here at the table. I'm Nigel Aves, your host. This is Rational Alchemy, though this time it was definitely rational music. Or was it musical alchemy? I'm not quite sure. Anyway, thank you for joining us. Bye for now. Others will not try or ever learn. Journey eyes wide open. It's all just a voyage. And return. You can see the light. Come on, hear the thunder Calling out It beckons like a beacon It sings out like a sine wave Soft and loud The echoes that are in you Some of them will shine while the